And now, there's something completely machinima. <laughs> Tracy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome to another installment of A Nap of Something Completely Machinima. I'm Damien Valentine and I'm joined by Tracy Harwood and Phil Rice. Hey there. Uh, we've lost Ricky this week because the Elden Ring DLC has been released and uh, all of our regular listeners will know that he's very fond of that game and we are probably never going to see him again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So this this week we're going to be talking about the various news that affects the machinima and its community. Um, we've got lots of interesting subjects to cover. Uh, Tracy, would you like to get started? Yeah, absolutely. Some stuff. Oh, I got bags of stuff again. Um, <laughs> I got some general machinima things. Firstly, uh, Real Illusion are hosting a character creator contest uh, with a phenomenal first prize of over forty five thousand dollars worth of swag now whoa yeah mm. uh, this is pretty amazing one of the judges on it is actually also the fabulous martin kleckner whose historical greek odyssey um is probably one of the most adventurous creative projects we've seen in recent years the deadline for submissions is actually the first of september um so if you're using character creator in your pipeline do consider entering um you both phil damien I'm looking at you too as well because you've created some amazing characters i think using well using iclone maybe but i guess you're using character creator underneath that yeah character well. creator is yeah. the is the software for doing stuff i'm happy with what i've made because my needs are pretty small but i don't hold a candle to to many of the people that use that i i know better than to enter that that particular contest uh, i will watch it with great interest because I actually sometimes I'm looking for s someone to hire. Uh, but yeah, that's I'm still really just a baby for that. Um, but I appreciate the thought. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I Dave think I'd find that quite a challenge as well. And I've created Star Wars characters, but I've got them specifically in mind. I don't think that those would be good to submit. Um, but I know I'll, I'll give it some thought. Maybe I can think of something to do, but uh, don't hold your breath of an entry from me. <laughs> Well, I just think, you know, given that you're both doing that sort of thing, I'm guessing they're looking for ultra realistic characters, probably, you know, with all the. That seems to be the way that, that yeah, their interests yeah. lean. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a shame, really, because I think. 45K is a lot. It is. Wow. It is. I definitely think give it a go and see what kind of comes back from it. Um, I could retire. <laughs> I don't think I could, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> But I wouldn't be entering it in any event. I'd probably be entering it with a photograph, maybe more than anything else. But I will put a link on the show notes so that anybody that's interested can kind of pick it up. So that's that's that one that I wanted to highlight. And then I found an interesting virtual book um, on how to be a video artist in Second Life. Um, it's by Stem Van Helsinki. Uh, costs Linden dollars seventy nine. I don't know what that is in real money. Probably about. Two pound fifty or something, or three bucks maybe. Um, I think it can only actually be read inside Second Life as well. So it huh. requires you to kind of find a place in a sandbox area in Second Life and unpack it and use it from there. Um, I don't know anyone that has used it at the moment, but it looks like a really interesting idea. Um, and I was really intrigued to see it as a kind of publication and and its distribution strategy in the in the way that, that I've just sort of shared with you. Yeah, that's pretty innovative. It is innovative, hmm. isn't it? Um, I think obviously if you're really into making Second Life films, my best advice is get along to Chantelle Harvey's Monday Meetup. Um, there's a fantastic Facebook group that she's running. I think every week she she does it, they discuss more and more works. Um, Some amazing work flows through there. Absolutely. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to um, connect with Chantel and all the Second Lifers that um, are part of that community. 
Um, I will put a link to this one though, because I mean, I've got a, a Second Life account. I, I'm I'm fairly certain I've got about two pound fifties worth of Lindens yeah. in it, so I'll see if I can do it and have a look at it, um, and maybe even give it a go at some point. Um, I'm not so good at the uh, video creation side of it. Um, so that's that one. And then I found, do you remember last month we talked about Skibbity Sam? Do you remember that? Right. Toilet yep. Sam. Well, it turns out um, that there is a bit more of a background to this than I had actually appreciated. It's been a meme that's been around for about a year. Who knew? Um, and I think it's been around longer than that. Do you think? Oh, well, I've is. seen it for longer than that, I, but I've never understood. I didn't have it. I'd still don't. I have no idea what the story is behind it. Uh, okay. It's a well, very not, strange image. It, indeed. And I, yeah. I did read up on it and it's gone over my head a little bit. Anyway, <laughs> there is a YouTube channel about it. Um, and there is actually a Roblox game for it too. So I will put links to those and you can do your own digging around. Um, and see what you can kind of come up with. Um, I actually thought, looking at it, our Ricky AI isn't that bad after all. <laughs> um, so I, you know, skibbity Sam uh, or skibbity whatever. Anyway, that's the thing. Uh, moving on then, um, and moving on to all things AI, I found another contest, um, this time for AI generated works. This one has a, a much tighter deadline. In fact, I'm not sure you'll make it as this goes out. It's the 15th of July, so not long if you're if you're only just listening to us. But, hey, that's the beauty of AI. Surely you can kind of cobble something together in seconds. This contest is hosted by Project Odyssey, and the prizes, guess this, get, get this, it's, it's $28,000 uh, cash and credits. Good grief. This is a, this is a pretty... This is a, you know, there's a fair bit of money kicking around this. Um, so it's, it's surely worth checking out. Um, so I'll put the link to that one in the show notes as well. And you've got seconds to get your film together on that. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you can do it. Um, Stable Diffusion has released its generative audio creator called Stable Audio Open. Now, I haven't quite figured out how to do this because you've got to go to GitHub and run the code from from uh, from there, download it and what have you, um, which makes it a little bit more than just log into a Discord and run it remotely kind of thing. Um, as I understand it, it enables you to run or create up to 47 seconds of sound effects and production elements from a text prompt as, as well as music, I think. Um, I'm quite intrigued by this, I have to say. And that's because I don't know if you remember me asking, do you have any places where I can find sound effects for Romans bathing? Do you remember me asking you that you guys that and you said, absolutely no chance will you find that on any of the, the <laughs> normal sort of sources. So I was thinking, you know, maybe what we can do here is actually find the uh, sounds that we actually are looking for in that little project that we're working on in my day job at work. Um which is a recreation as a as a metaverse type thing of uh, Roman baths that exist in the city. Um, well, it's worth mentioning then that uh, Eleven Labs has released a AI text to sound effects generator as oh. part of their platform. Okay, good. And theirs, of course, is all online. I don't know if there's setup and stuff like that involved with the stable audio one. Usually, those are I've, I almost feel like those are that a lot of the stability sources are geared towards people who would tend to maybe be a Linux user, you know, more of a do it yourselfer and yeah. host yeah. it locally and that kind of thing. But if you don't mind doing it, you know, online for a sub, uh, you know reasonably priced subscription service, Eleven Labs is a good alternative for that. And they just they just broke that out. I would say a couple of weeks ago. Oh, brilliant! Okay, well, we'll put links to both of those on the mm -hmm. on the show notes as well then. And then I was intrigued to see that Tribeca had screened a program of AI generated shorts um, created by OpenAI's Sora. Now, this wasn't actually an open program. Uh, in, in fact, it seems to have been um, a commissioned um, set of content from five specific filmmakers. Um, and as part of that initiative, apparently what they did was brought these filmmakers in into some sort of space and educated them about OpenAI's tools, 
gave them early access to Saw and then empowered them to kind of create their own uh, films on on their terms. And as I understand it, they were even briefed on how to adhere to the terms of agreements that had been negotiated with the DGA and the WGA and also SAG-AFTRA and what have you. Um, so they got kind of a, an, an ethical dimension embedded in them, which I think is quite interesting. Now, didn't really know any of the filmmakers as such. They were an international group of folks. The screening only lasted about 20 minutes. And after the screening um, took place, which was at the end of May, in fact, um, there was a, a hosted conversation with the with the filmmakers about the importance of artists pushing boundaries, challenging ideas, bringing stories to life in innovative ways and what have you. Um, there was some kickback from some of the uh, some of the audience about the program, as I understand it, and uh, uh, quite a bit of debate that went on about it online too, um, not least about the potentials and limitations of it, which is kind of definitely worth considering uh, listening to what the um, um, filmmakers were having to say about it. I was intrigued by one specific comment, which just made me sort of think, what the hell are these guys doing? Um and that was in relation to uh, 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 what they called game-changing technological shifts uh, in the in the past twenty years, where they are talking about three big components being the driving force for the way films are evolving in the way they are made. And guess what they are? They are the internet, the arrival of smartphones, and the adoption of generative AI. I kind of thought, what the hell are they doing? They have missed this whole game-based machinima world of possibilities. You know, the 3D, real-time, immersive stuff that we've been talking about for years. Where the hell is that in their thinking? I have no idea. So I just throw that out there. Um, once again, slightly confused and confounded and frustrated at the lack of attention that uh, the film industry seems to pay to some of the stuff that we're talking about, which is so profoundly influencing the way that VFX and films are are made um, by the more creative folks, shall we say. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'll move on. I'll, I'll put a link, by the way, to the Tribeca uh, film shorts discussion and also some of the text-based discussion that took place around it. Um, I couldn't find a video of the discussion, unfortunately. I think it just happened to be in person. Um, related to that, I saw a few, uh, a, a, sorry, a big pun, a new AI film academy that has been launched, um, which was quite intrigued about too, um, with an inaugural uh, AI uh, film academy awards ceremony that was held in Lisbon, also at the end of May, uh, and hosted by the... Um, NFC Summit, NFC Non-Fungible Conference or whatever it stood for, I don't really know. Um, what they say, the, what AI FA Awards say they were doing was bringing together the worlds of film, art, music and fashion. And folks that were there included people like Beeple, who's the guy that basically insider traded the sale of his artwork uh, for a an astonishing sum of money of about 45 million i think it sold for on um Shoot. on nfts uh turns out he owned part of the company that bought it um and a few others um randy zuckerberg being another um as well as web3 technologists and entrepreneurs i've got to say i'm not sure about this one um but it's an interesting development as a coalition with the NFT community largely. I will be interested to see how this plays out. But I think given that these guys, generally speaking, are all about, uh, can I be so blunt as to say almost Ponzi trading, uh, no prejudice intended. Um, I'll see how this one plays out, I think. So I'm not massively impressed there. Um, mm. And mm. then finally... Um, some really interesting projects that I've seen this month. Uh, just a couple of days ago, as we're recording this, Epic Spaceman released his latest 
science jaunt. Um, this time it's about nanoscale. Um, it's very much positioned as an educational video. I don't think it's quite as wow as some of the other ones that we've seen. Um, you know, you, you can clearly see where he's going with what he's doing. He's clearly ed- aiming at an education market with this one. Um, and it's and it's pushing that much more in, in the foreground. Um, obviously, you know, Ricky, I did actually mention this. He's not here to, to, to discuss it, but we found an Elden Ring band. Not the usual kind of thing you see going on in Elden Ring, um, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, nice little link to it I'll, I'll put on there. And then another one I was very curious about was a was a was a, a little short about a swan and a robot made in unreal um entitled sydney and socket which presents a story that includes themes of hope diversity inclusion and friendship and it's been directed by um somebody called jennifer mcnew now um as i understand it it was a it was made in an eight week slam hosted by cg pro um and it's interesting uh Not so much perhaps for the output of it, but for the process that went into it. And it's worth mentioning here that McNew is not, um, she's not by any means uh, inexperienced. She's she's worked on over 40 feature films and TV projects as a VFX artist. And she's worked for the likes of Industrial Light Magic, Sony and DreamWorks. So um, McNew is is not a McNewbie. Not a McNewbie at all. <laughs> Very Goodness good point, Phil. Yeah. I, I, yeah, nice one. Um, I'll put a link to that one as well. And then finally, if you want to see something that is a bit of fun, check out the speed comparison of 3D animals. It's absolutely hilarious and really inspiring. It's uh, kind of a visual animation of those books you used to read as kids, which explain to you the, the, um, that man... Uh, isn't actually the center of of earth it can be you know we can be outrun by snakes and cheetahs and dogs and what have you and, and i absolutely loved it it's made by red side um and they've done a heap of other films in a in a similar sort of vein it's game inspired of course uh and everything is really kind of cool in it believe it or not it's a 12 minutes long video um but it slips by in just a few seconds. Um, nice. I, I think what I liked about it was um, the fact that you could hear animals running. So you could hear them pitter pattering across the ground in whatever form of legs that they got. Um, and then there's also um, a, a view from the back of the animal running. Um, and then you've got, you know, you've got the camera sweeping around them. It's, it's great. I loved it. Um, it's not the kind of thing you expect to see. And given that there's kind of like, you know, predators running alongside prey animals, you kind of half expect them to sort of jump on each other at, at points, <laughs> but they don't. It's just the speed that's being analysed here. I think it's, you know, for me on the par with Epic Spaceman's kind of um, show and tell type stuff, um, but Sounds perhaps great. for a younger audience. Um, sure. And that's it from me this month. I. Phil, I see. Let you've, me. Uh, got yeah, I'll I'll inject just one real quick, simply because it's AI related. Um, <clears throat> I guess file this one under the uh, uh, backlash news. Hmm. But um, over on X, I saw someone make reference to uh, a story that there was a uh, a London cinema. I think it's the Prince Charles Cinema uh, was scheduled to. Uh, to show a film that was reported to have its script written entirely by ChatGPT. Oh. Uh, which we can all scratch our heads <laughs> as to whether that would be a good outcome, no matter how good the actors are, but okay. Uh, but apparently there was enough of a backlash that uh, they pulled it. Oh. So, and that's really all that I know about it. I will, we'll, we'll make sure that there's a link to the article uh in the news stuff but uh yeah it's 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 interesting um i don't know if the backlash surely the backlash wasn't just general public because i get the impression that the general public doesn't really have a strong opinion about chat gpt particularly and this wouldn't catch their attention so somebody must have worked pretty hard uh to call attention to this and drum up 
uh, enough support to I would suspect that there was some organization behind that but I guess we'll um, we'll find out yeah I know a little bit about this I don't know much about the film itself but I did read about this um my understanding is the film is about the dangers of AI generative content and they used AI generated oh, wow. content to make some of it that's ironic. I don't know I don't know you mentioned the script, so I don't know if that's the limit to it, if there's more in the film itself. Um, so it was a and, film, not a play, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And my understanding was initially the Prince Charles Cinema agreed to show it because they wanted to show that this is a could be a, something that's a problem, the generation of AI. But then the backlash, I'm assuming it was creators who weren't keen on being replaced by generative ai you know the risk of that um they were the ones that complained about it and so prince charles said actually on reflection we don't think this is a good fit for us ah so you know, in the us that organization is called the writers guild uh wga uh, i don't which, know if it was that them well, specifically. I wonder, yeah but i wonder if i'm i'm assuming that uh, the uk probably has a similar yeah. organization uh, where where professional writers and screenwriters in particular um, can kind of get together and and you know yeah. make some noise about issues like this. So I I wonder if if a group like that was maybe involved in calling attention yeah. to it or 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 raising the protest. Probably. I mean, it. Well, I I didn't read that specifically into it. I just know that there was that kind of backlash from creators who weren't happy that this AI generated film was right being shown at, at quite a quite prestigious cinema in London. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I know about it as well. But it's definitely worth mentioning because mm. um, the ongoing saga of uh, AI generative content and is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? That, that's going to go on for quite a while. Yeah, I you, think the conversation just, is widening and the awareness yeah. is widening too. Yeah. If you just cancel it, though, surely you are not then allowing for debate. I don't understand this <coughs> cancel culture. Um thing that's going on really i mean you know i can tell you now i run an art ai festival and have done since 2018 and what we try to do in that is show creative applications of ai that demonstrate the warts and all of it in interesting ways in order to generate public debate yeah and it's you know you but but by taking it away you you're not helping the public make any kind of informed decisions, I think. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. They're going to have to, the, the people who are, who have taken a position against this, they're going to have to allow those discussions to happen. Yes, they are. One way or the other. They're not going to get the result they want through no discussion. Mm. That's for sure. Uh, there is a risk, of course, that, you know, the discussion that the idea that they're backing won't win, but it needs to be debated. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. I don't know any more specifics about it. That's just the general gist of it. I got okay. from reading about it at some point. Interesting. Um, so yeah, maybe it's worth having a, yeah, I'll have a dig around. I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I've That's got all some, I've got. Uh, yeah. Damien, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I've got three, um, tools that, uh, might be helpful for machinima creators. So first up, we've got the, Starfield Creation Kit has finally been released. Now, these are the Ooh. official mod tools for Starfield. It's official then. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, they were released about two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, they, they, they were announced and that it was, they're, they're being tested and they're being very, Bethesda are being very cagey about when they were going to be released. And then suddenly they were here. Uh, right. There was a, they got announced during the um, Xbox Gamer Showcase thing at part of the Summer Games Fest. Um, they showed off the the upcoming DLC, which is coming later in the year. And at the end of that trailer, it said, uh, "Coming today, an update." And that there was some new content. And it said, "And the mod tools." Uh, and they're available later yeah. that day. <laughs> um, there was a little bit of controversy with it because the tools are out there and they're free to download, and the mod support has existed for the PC version of the game, um, but it wasn't on the Xbox version until now. So now that the mods can be uh, played on the Xbox version, but there's now an official mod source built into the game, which is how you use them on the Xbox. Now, the controversy is not about that specifically, but it's about that Bethesda have monetized the mods. 
to oh. that that mm. form. And oh. the big thing was that there's a new quest line they've added to the game. And the first one's free with the big update. And the second one, it's a series of bounty hunter missions. I haven't played it, and you're gonna see why when I explain it, but there's the second mission is in, available in the mod center. I forget the exact name of it, but it, it's it, on the options in the main menu of the game. And it costs seven dollars for this one mission. And from my understanding is you can finish it in 15 minutes. No. Oh. So a lot of people are saying, what's the point of spending this amount of money on something you're going to finish so quickly? And at the end of it, you get a costume that your character can wear. But it's a single player game, so it's not like you're going to be showing it off to anyone else. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, Bethesda said, yeah, we're going to be looking closely at this. Now, what they, the way they're saying is modders can create content and make some money back from it. But a lot of what I've seen is mod makers are either choosing to release them free to the mod center, because that is an option as well. There are lots of mods out there that are free, or just making them downloadable on a modding website. I think it's Nexus is a popular one. Yeah. Uh, so you don't need to touch that at all, and they're free there. So, you know, I I kind of agree that $7 for a 15-minute mission is not a good bargain. Mm, mm. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, that's certainly not a mission that I'm going to play because mm -hmm. I, I'm not spending that kind of money on something that, that can be. Now, if it's a, you know, something that's going to take several hours or a series of missions that tell a story over several hours, that might be worth it, but not for 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, there's lots of Star Wars mods I've noticed. I haven't tried any yet because I like the base game. I'm still enjoying the base game as it is before I want to start adding to the um out of universe content to it but i've seen some very impressive stuff that people have been sharing around and i'm looking forward to seeing you know what new planets people are going to do new costumes and ship parts um stuff that fits in the game well so not just right not just um star wars the star trek stuff because i'm sure there'll be plenty of that i want to see what people create that fits in starfield um because it's, it's a very interesting world that they've created um so that's that for starfield um I don't know what kind of machinima potential it's going to be other than more mod tools are uh, always good for machinima uh, mm. bringing in content. The next one is Homeworld 3. It's another space game that was released uh, about two months ago now. This is a space RTS game. It's full 3D motion. Um, and lots of spaceships and battles and it looks stunning. And the third game in the series that, you know, it's been a long running series since 1999. Uh, the third game's finally been released, and then they were initially going to release the mod tools with the game, but they said they needed a little bit more work to be uh, refined. Uh, so now those have been made available. Uh, like Starfield, I have not tried them out yet, but I'd be very interested to see what people do with them, and I don't know if the, what kind of mission potential is going to be, but you know, it's good to have those tools if you want to make some space battle content for your project. Maybe this is something sure. that will help you out. Uh, so that's worth keeping an eye on. And then the third one, which is something I discovered earlier today, and I used it to create this background behind me. Uh, it's a game, and I say game loosely because there's not really any challenge to it. It's a city builder called Dystopica. And when I say city builder, it's sort of like SimCity or um, City Skylines, but there's no money or resources. You can just place building just a sandbox no oh wow yeah um and obviously it's cyberpunk themed um they call it cozy cyberpunk i, I don't really know how that works but because <laughs> usually cyberpunk's quite a bleak and dark future um mm. oh, that represents that kind of stuff but um as you can see behind me it looks very blade runner uh i'm going to turn around so you can see mm. um this took me about half an hour to create and that Holy includes learning how to use the software that's 30 minutes from installing it to creating this background and rendering it out. I'd say that's a fair better use of your $7 because that's how much they're charging for this right now. Yeah. $7. And Actually, right now it's 10% off, so under $7. Unbelievable. Yeah. I assumed that that was a shot I didn't know from uh, Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's beautiful. It is. And, you know, half an hour from installing it to this. Unbelievable. Um, so you 
unless you get some buildings and you can raise them and you, you place a building you can rotate it around and you can make it get taller and it should get back down again and as you're playing around with it you unlock more um decorations to put on the city i don't know what the mechanism is for that yet because it seems i only got to play with it for half an hour earlier this afternoon so um but uh, you know there's lights and things on the on the buildings yeah um and there's other things like you can put this it's like a a u-shaped thing and you place it on top of a building and it generates flying traffic you can oh. see it very briefly on the top of this building here you see some that is amazing oh yeah. i see yeah so i put a few of those around there's other there's one uh here somewhere and it's it's like a helipad thing and a, a flying car will take up take off and it kind of just disappears off and there's other traffic that's just randomly generated anyway and the other thing is you've got these billboards and you place they, they come in different sizes and you place it and then you can if you press the right mouse button it cycles through different options but if you press i you can import your own texture so if you look at this building here it's an air to the empire poster on there. Oh, oh wow. that's fantastic <laughs> just to just to show off what it can do and there's um over here i wrote coded transmission studios because there's a text one and you can enter your own text on there as well oh um, you're just showing off now damien well, on to... on the steam page <laughs> yeah they have a couple videos uh one of which is you know kind of showing for lack of a better word gameplay but the other one is a lot of fly throughs is is there some kind of camera control uh built into this yeah so there's a camera mode and it's kind of set up to be photo mode just for photos but there's a video option as well now you can't export the video but you can capture you can with capture OBS. it with a okay got it um so when in the photo in the camera mode you can choose the time of day and there's you can choose the sun color and the, how much fog there is there's an option for rain um in the sun position um so you, you play around those you get the way you want and then there's the, the video mode what it does is you it gives you a start position and an end position so we do is you move the camera to where you want it to be for the start position you press that button move it to the end position press that button and you can generate up to you can set how long the transition is going to be up to 30 seconds so then you press play all the interface disappears and you'll get the camera will just pan across from one to the other that's how i did this but i set the start and end position to be exactly the, to same. the same yeah, yeah. But I did play around and with that's the all you'd really need. I mean, I assume this is this is mainly useful for establishing shot type of things, not yeah. close ups. So yeah, just a simple pan or dolly move would would be perfect. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, like in the beginning of Blade Runner, when you get those various shots of the city, right. you, know, the, the, you could do that easily. There's even oh. some towers that have smoke coming up like the ones they're not fire, but the smoke comes up and it's yeah, kind of yeah, orange. Yeah. Um, so you can do Incredible. those kind of shots very easily. Yeah, I was very impressed by this, and I thought this is my really great find. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be interested to see what people use this for because it's great for cityscapes in any kind of absolutely. Setting. I can and hear chose... Phil's brain going. Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta go. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for that price, it's a bargain. And even if you miss that ten percent off it's still a bargain oh yeah um incredible and, you know there's no game to it but you, you can't once you get a, you've got this square here and you build it up you can't really do anything with it other than get some beauty shots but for a tool like that it's great for it holy cow this thing was released june 21st yeah that's like so two days ago was weird yeah recording. two days ago from the time of this recording oh wow. yeah amazing and it's not uh an early access game this is the full this is 1.0 wow yeah. what a great find was, yeah, and when you load it up the message comes up from the developer it's, he's a solo developer and he did it over the course of a year as he was traveling around um i can't remember, i think it's shanghai and hong kong and i can't oh, remember wow. he was doing a, a year travel tour and this is what he was working on obviously he's inspired by some of those bright futuristic looking cities that he yeah. was visiting do you have any um, idea what he developed it in is this a no Unity idea. game? Yeah, I, I can't no tell from looking at it. It's gorgeous. The lighting yeah. is wonderful. The atmospherics, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah I'm so a I chose excited. a nice setting, but you know, you can play around with all kinds of things. Brilliant. So 
yeah that that's i think that's wrapped up the news for this month uh so uh let us know if you uh enjoy any of this news if you find any of these tools um helpful if you're going to enter the ai uh, contest that tracy talked about or the character creator contest do let us know what you sent in because we we're very interested in seeing what people come up with um if you've got any other views on some things we talked about please contact us at and now uh talk is it <laughs> talk at completely talk machinima at... com. thank you there <laughs> talk, send us feedback there <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's it for um for me damien valentine uh, from tracy highwood and phil rice uh i'm sure phil's about to head off to this futuristic city and make his own goodbye uh, Good, <laughs> goodbye goodbye <laughs> all right we'll catch you next week bye bye bye, -bye.